It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. These are really revelations of how you and I should live. Amen. Amen. So it's not just something you do at the end of the service for people to come forward to be saved. This is really the key for you living in salvation. Amen. Amen. And so Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, and uh, just to cover a little bit more here, we'll start with verse 6. Romans chapter 10, verse 6. It says, but the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise. So you could just simply say it this way, being made right with God by faith talks this way, speaks this way. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend up into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above? Who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead? Verse 8, but what does it say? He says, the word is nigh thee, even in your mouth, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith that we preach. Verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So in these verses here, the Apostle Paul tells us really, he makes it so simple. I think any of us could clearly understand it. And this is what we call the great confession. The great confession, which is Christianity. What is the great confession of Christianity? Uh, Well, it's simply this confession that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. You could say, well, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. Uh, But it's not enough just to believe that in your heart. He said, you're going to have to say that with your mouth. Amen. Amen. Uh, We we flew on American Airlines uh, yesterday uh, because uh, for our pilots, for our jet, um, they're, they're all off for Easter to go to church with their families, and then I have to go to work. But anyway, I came here, and you're my family, right? So we're family, so I'm still with my family. But uh, the pilots wanted off to go to Easter with their family. So I'm flying American Airlines, me and Trina. Wow, that was a rare experience. Hadn't happened in a long time. And, you know, people going through all your stuff, you know, and then uh, make sure you wear your mask, you know, and make sure you get it up over your nose. And and uh, so I found the way around that. It's just you could actually eat a sandwich for an hour and a half, and you wouldn't have to keep your mask up, you know. Just say I'm eating. Actually, we were, we were riding in first class, and uh, the the stewardess, you know, could pull, pull your mask up, and I held my sandwich up. I'm I'm eating a sandwich right now. So, <laughs> if you want to breathe, bring a sandwich. Um, so. Um, uh, then the, the first leg of our trip, we were on a commuter airline from Alexandria to Dallas. And, and so uh, uh, we happened to be in the exit row on the, uh, the smaller jet. And so this happens every time you're on the exit row, the uh, stewardess uh, will come up to you and say, are you willing and able to help me during an emergency? So the stewardess comes up, you're in the exit row. And so they got all the little pictures, you know, of what you do if there's an emergency, how you pull that, the, the side, open that door, and then throw it out, you know. And um, I thought of maybe bringing some cartoons and putting them on there, but I, I decided not to do that. But anyway, so uh, she says, are you willing to help? And got all the little pictures drawn, you know, so you're kind of going through that, and then you can pull this lever, pull it out. Whoops, wrong one. But no, if you pull it, <laughs> throw the door out. So he says, are you willing to help us uh, in an emergency? And so um, with the mask on, and so this lady says, I need a verbal response. In other words, most time you nod your head, right? 
No, I need a verbal response. So when you see what happened from the cross to the throne, God doesn't want you just to nod your head. God said, I need a verbal response. Let's try that one more time. I need a verbal response. In other words, he said, for this salvation, what Jesus has done for you to work in your life, you cannot just nod about it. In other words, the confession that produces salvation is you confess with your mouth that Jesus is my Lord. When you confess with your mouth, he said, this is the confession that precedes the possession of salvation. All right, let's try that one more time. This is the confession that actually precedes salvation. In other words, a lot of times people, allow, you know, they want to be saved first, or they want to be delivered first, or they want to be healed first, or they want to be blessed first. But God said, no, this is first. The confession of your faith is first, and then that is what brings you to the experience of salvation. Amen. And so this confession, he says, Paul makes it so clear, and so simple that anyone could do it. He said, for with a heart, you believe. You believe on the inside, or you could say it this way. Uh, don't just kind of say things off the top of your head, but take a moment and let it register on your heart. Amen. Amen. That confession is what produces salvation. The word confession simply means to say the same thing or to agree with. In other words, your, your daily confession, your continual confession is actually going to bring you into the experience of salvation or actually it will limit what you receive from God. So he says, this is the initial confession and this is why Christianity is called the great confession. Yeah. Amen. You go all the way back to Matthew 16 where Jesus said to Simon, who do you say, I need a verbal response. Who do you say that I am? And when Simon said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God, then Jesus said, I know that that's not a natural thing. You did not get it from man. You did not get it from your sense knowledge. God showed you that. So now the revelation of who Christ is, and then the confession of that revelation, he said, and I will build my church. And he said, not only that, he said, when Simon said, you are the Christ, then this is one of the first things happening. I was 17 years old. And I saw that when Simon Peter said, you are the Christ, then Jesus said, flesh and blood, not reveal this to my father. And then Jesus said, and you are Peter. And upon this rock, what rock? That's the revelation of who Christ is. I will build my church. And actually, we know that there's a connection between this rock and Simon Peter. His name was Rock. So he simply said, when you get the revelation that you're a piece of the rock. Or the way the Lord said it to me, he said, when, when you acknowledge and see who I am and confess who I am, he said, then I will tell you who you are. All right, so your identification with Christ and the new birth and who you are in Christ, he said, begins with that revelation of who Christ is, and not just that revelation, but the confession that is made unto salvation. Or you could say it this way, it is the confession that precedes possession, and he says the word of faith must be in two places. Not just in your heart, he said, it must be in your mouth. Are oh, y'all still with me? Matter of fact, he said, don't even say, don't even think, don't even say, I'm going to have to bring Christ down from the heaven. I'm going to have to raise him up from the dead. He said, no, the word is near you. Uh, and other translations say, your answer is nearby. Another translation says, um, your answer is close. 
In other words, you're not going to have to accomplish some impossible feat to come to heaven to bring Christ down. And some people, even in their prayer life, they'll say, Lord, I need you to come down. You're going to have to come down. I'm dealing with an impossible situation. And Jesus is simply saying this, I already came down. I went to the lowest place. I ascended to the highest place. I just need you to do one thing. I need a verbal response from you that you will say, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And he said, and that's so easy. And that's how salvation, which you know, includes more than just someday I'm going to go to heaven. Let's try that again. I said salvation means more than, well, when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. Salvation simply means deliverance, safety, healing, preservation, soundness, everything that's included in the plan of redemption. So he said, it is your confession. Now listen close. Dad Hagen or Kenneth E. Hagen, uh, I still watch him on YouTube, watched him yesterday and listened to his messages. He was a spiritual father, not only to me, but to Pastor David. I mean, just, just like a, a father. I mean, and uh, so Dad Hagen is the one that taught us faith and how faith works. Now, my dad's a pastor, so I'm raised in church, so I know the best sermons and I know the best preachers, and I heard all of them, and I've been saved many, many times. Actually, in my dad's church, they didn't even have revival until I came forward again and got saved again. <laughs> Somebody said, that, that's before the last time I got saved. Anyway, so, so I, <laughs> they baptized me several different ways. You know, they even held me underwater, I think, to try to get, get things to work for me. <laughs> but of all the great sermons I heard, nothing really worked for me on a daily basis until I heard how faith works. And he says, and the word of faith is very close to you. He said, it's as close as your what? Your heart and your mouth. Amen. So, Dad Hagen teaching on confession, on the speaking or the saying part of faith. Amen. I like to say, if, if your faith is not strong enough to move your mouth, it'll never move a mountain. So, a lot of times people are wanting miracles. When Dad Hagen said people are looking for a miracle, when really the door to the supernatural opens so easily by believing and speaking. Lord, I believe and I speak. In other words, the word is in two places in my heart and it's in my mouth. And he said it is that confession that precedes salvation or the experience of salvation, not necessarily how you feel. Come on, Dad Hagen said, even if failure is on all four corners, you hold fast to your confession. All right, go to Hebrews 4.14 real quickly because my, my time is short, hallelujah. Not because Jesus is coming soon. I believe he's coming soon, but it's because uh, they just kept singing and singing. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> but I flew a long ways for you to sing and sing. I could have stayed home and sent a video. But anyway. So, <laughs> all right, y'all found Hebrews 4, 14. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I enjoyed all the singing. <laughs> I told Pastor David, I said, I used to pray that I could sing until I heard you. Then I started praying you could. Anyway, <laughs> so Hebrews 4, 14. Save time. I'll just quote it for you. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heaven. All right, let's try that one more time. Seeing that, in other words, Jesus raised from the dead, he's alive. Now, as our high priest, as our ad advocate, as our shepherd, and as the apostle of our confession. Right now, Jesus at the right hand of God. In other words, you could say your confession of faith registers in three places. Your confession of faith means you bring yourself into agreement with your words, and that agreement has an impact in three places. Number one, in heaven itself. Actually, Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before the Father. So it's your confession actually even activates what Jesus is doing in heaven. All right? So that confession of faith to agree with God instead of agreeing just with your circumstances or agreeing with your feelings, you say, I'm going to agree with God no matter how things look right now. 
are, no matter how I feel right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it registers in three places. Number one, in heaven. Number two, where? It registers on your own heart or on your own consciousness, your heart, even your conscience. So your confession precedes the experience of salvation. It registers in heaven. Number two, it registers in the heart of the believer. And number three, your confession registers over hell and the devil and every demon and every unseen strategy of the devil. In other words, when you make that bold confession, I heard Brother Hagin, Dad Hagin said it this way one time, because one preacher, while Dad Hagin's making a bold confession, then that preacher said, aren't you afraid the devil will hear you? See, some people have more respect for the devil than they do for the Word of God. Aren't you afraid the devil will hear you? And Dad Hagin said, no, I said it for his benefit. He's the very dude I wanted to hear me say that. So sometimes you make the confession, come on, it registers in heaven, but sometimes you're making that confession, it registers in your heart, and sometimes you're saying, I want to make sure the devil hears me say this right now. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. I'm a child of God. I know I'm saved. Jesus is my Lord. Hallelujah. So anybody else that's listening, seen or unseen, I want to let you know, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. So look at Hebrews 4.14. Let's get back to this real quickly here. So Dad Hagen said, I could spend two months every day teaching on this subject, never come to the end of it, so you know I'm not going to get it in 20 minutes. Huh? Amen. And he said, it's one of the most valuable, important, and significant teachings in all the Word of God is right here in Romans 10, 9, and 10, and Hebrews 4, 14. One of the what? Most valuable, significant, and important teaching." in all the Word of God. In other words, you need to be very strong on this subject. Let's try it again. I said you need to be very strong because even people that know about it don't always practice it because it's not just what you say in church. Come on, it's what you're going to say at the house, what you're going to say in the face of a challenge that's going to determine whether Jesus' victory becomes your victory. Amen. All right, so look at Hebrews 4.13. Did, did they put that up on the board? No more. One of them rubber bands came loose, I think. That scripture don't go for it. So Hebrews 4.14. See if you can get some bubble gum put, put that back together. So Hebrews 4.14 says, seeing then, if you're looking at your Bible, seeing then we have a great high priest. Isn't it great to have Jesus? Come on. He's touched with the feeling of your infirmities. He knows every temptation, every trial that you go through. He's actually overcome every temptation, every trial. And he's your Lord. He's your Savior. Gave you his life and his blood carries the antibodies for any situation you'll face. Seeing we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast. The word hold fast means what? Hold on tight. <laughs> Why is he telling you to hold on tight? Well, because there's no such thing as unchallenged faith. Amen? That means the enemy and your circumstances will still come against you. But he says, our assignment, this is my job, my assignment is to hold on tight, hold fast to my confession of faith. Amen? And Hebrews 10, 23, he adds something else. What's he add? Without wavering. Because he is faithful that promised. Yeah. All right, let's try that. Come on, we just put Hebrews 4.14, Hebrews 10, uh, 23 together. Let us hold fast, and the Amplified Bible says, hold fast the confession of our faith in him. Hold on tight. Now let's add 23. Without wavering. In other words, that means don't say something on Sunday, say something different on Monday. Don't say something at church on Sunday, say something different on, at your house on Tuesday. In other words, the confession means to say the same thing or to agree with or bring your words into agreement with, number one, who Jesus is, and number two, what he's done for you, amen, and number three, what the blood of Christ has done for you, what it does in you. So he says, you need to mix faith with that, which is your confession. Hallelujah. Amen. I like to say, uh, your mountain needs to hear your voice. Come on, now, you may need to hear the pastor's voice, 
but your mountain needs to hear your voice. Come on, you need to hear the pastor's voice, but your giant needs to hear your voice. Amen. So that's your confession. Now, pastoring in Louisiana for 20 years, now my son's a pastor, uh, doing a great job. So, but when I was pastoring in Louisiana, now Louisiana, I'm sure, may be a little different than than Vegas, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. People are pretty much the same everywhere. But Louisiana, he's Cajun guys. So Louisiana, I'm preaching one Sunday morning. Here comes an African, African-American man and his wife and his kids. And while I'm preaching, he comes right down the middle aisle, walks all the way to the front and sits on the front row. <laughs> now, you know, we have ushers that are supposed to like deal with things that are, you know, to try to keep things in order. But I suppose if Jesus would have had too many ushers, the woman with issue of blood never would have got healed. Anyway, so... Because they say, stop that woman. She breathed through the crowd. Anyway, nobody's going to stop him. He comes all the way to the front. First time in church, sits right on the front row, and I just keep preaching. Now, after church, he comes up to me, and I find out, you know, he'd, he'd gotten out of prison, and he'd been into a rough lifestyle in the streets and stuff. So he came up to me and, and introduced himself. His name is Steve Sweezy. Uh, he's in heaven now with the Lord. So Steve, man, he's paying attention, and he became the most faithful church member, best soul winner. Who knows how many people he brought to the church? But he comes up to the front. He says this. He's now, Pastor, I've been to some churches in my life, and I've heard a lot of preachers preach. He said, and while they're preaching, in my mind, I'm saying, I don't know what go in the blank, but I know that don't go there. He apparently he had taken some tests and he didn't know what goes in the blank. Yeah. So, so he said, while he was preaching, I was saying, I don't know what goes in the blank, but I know that don't go there. <laughs> he said, but while you were preaching, I said, now that's what goes in the blank. <laughs> so I, I want to tell you something this morning. Now, you're going to have a lot of questions in life that you ain't going to know what goes in the blank. But this morning, I just told you what go in the blank. This is what go there. Come on, no matter what you're facing in life, come on, Jesus died, shed his blood, raised from the dead. But it is your confession of that that brings you into agreement with that, that Jesus is my Lord. When you declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ anywhere you are, you're saying, Satan can no longer dominate me. Sin can no longer dominate me. Sickness can no longer dominate me. Poverty can no longer dominate me. Fear can no longer dominate me. Depression can no longer dominate me. I'm declaring with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord. He is the master. And the word Lord there means he is victor which means he is the undefeated, undisputed, heavyweight champion of the universe. Come on, when he was raised from the dead, he spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. That means the devil knows more about his defeat than most Christians. You say, why? Because the devil was there. So what's God asking you and me to do? Come on, in the word of faith, what's he asking us to do? Hold fast. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. There is a tremendous power in the positive confession of who Christ is, what he has done, and what he is doing for us right now at the right hand of God. Your faith will never rise above the level of your confession. Satan trembles when you open the word, but he runs when you speak the word. Your confession of faith brings you into a consciousness of who you are in Christ. The word of God was spoken before it was written, and it was written so it could be spoken. When you hold fast to your confession of faith, you are connected to Jesus' victory. There is a miracle in your mouth. Turn your faith loose today by believing and speaking God's word. For your offering of any amount, 
we will send you Mark's new book, The Great Confession. In this book, you will learn the power of a positive confession of the blood of Jesus, who you are in Christ, and the power of speaking God's word. Believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural in your life. The spirit of faith will take the victim out of your voice and put victory in your voice. Get ready to overcome adversity and watch the mountains in your life move. You'll also receive the brand new three CD set, The Great Confession. In these messages, you will learn the importance of holding fast to your positive confession of faith. You can also listen to these messages for free on the Mark Hankins Ministry app. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your offering will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministry Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. For your gift of any amount, you will receive a three CD set and Pastor Mark Hankins' new book, The Great Confession. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today, and I hope that it was a blessing to you. I know that this message is so powerful, life-changing and life-giving, and I'm so glad that you got to hear it today. Something that is very exciting is my dad came out with a brand new book called The Great Confession. Let me read you a quote from this book by F.F. F. Bosworth. It says, nothing will establish and build your faith as quickly as the confession of who you are and what you have in Christ. Okay, listen to this. Confession precedes possession. It is so important that we speak and proclaim and declare the word of God over our lives. It's not just enough to, to hear the word. It's not just enough to look at the word. It's not just enough to be around the word. But once you get the word in your mouth, that's when things begin to change. The good news is we want to get this book to you free of cost, but any amount of gift that you want to do, if you want to contribute any amount, we want to get this book to you in your hands because we know it is going to change your life. So you can call the number on the screen or go to markhankins.org. You can also go on the app and we will send you this book for free. We hope you have a wonderful day. Be blessed. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. I'll see you next time. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. Thank you for watching.